was supposed to be on the morning talk shows, of course, at the last minute. It's amazing how powerful these chemical companies are at the last minute. 45 minutes before I was supposed to go on the morning talk show at 7 o'clock or 7.30 in the morning, the producer come out and said, uh, sorry, he said, uh, we've had to change the schedule a little bit. He said, we're going to still talk about this, but we're going to bring somebody in from the British Beekeepers. We have a guy here from the British Beekeepers who's going to talk this morning. The interesting thing about the British Beekeepers Association, Bear Crop Science has given them 20,000 pounds a year. Here's 20,000 pounds, that's $40,000. We don't care what you do with it, but just remember next year, if you want 20,000 more pounds, just remember where you got it. So the gentleman who spoke that morning on, on the morning show said, uh, we don't know what's going on with the bees, but we have mite problems, and we have this and that, the other thing. And some people talk about pesticides, but we're not sure. So that was their answer. Over the last couple years, and as the evidence keeps mounting, and we don't have we don't have the the solid evidence to, to link all this all this with the bees disappearing, but we can draw a line in the sand across the country as corn and soybeans move through the Midwest because of ethanol and so on. As the corn moves, the bees start collapsing. One of my best friends runs the bees out of out of Jamestown. North Dakota. Started seeing corn show up two years ago. This past winter lost 40% of his, of his bee outfit of 25,000 hives of bees. Can you imagine what over 10,000 dead beehives stacked up in a pile looks like? I mean, we're talking about something that more than fills this room. It's a million dollar and his pollinate, just his losses and pollination contracts in California were a million dollars. And he's got to figure out how to put bees back in these boxes. And Zach called me a couple weeks ago. He said, David, the bees still won't even look at that stuff. They won't even rob the honey out of it. I said, I know what you're talking There's something going on there. We don't know what it is. The, we all, as, as taxpayers, American citizens, think that EPA was put there to serve us and to protect us. <laughs> well, a lot of things have changed over the years. Years ago, chemicals came out, and the land grant universities took those chemicals and played with them and seen what was good and what was bad, and they told the farmers and the horticulturists and the lawn care people and everybody else what was good and bad, and, and so on, and they used, that's the way it was handled. Today, the chemical companies basically put it out there, and then we, if it works fine, if it doesn't work, it was a big experiment. What's happened today? Jay's giving me the five minute time here. <laughs> two years ago, the two national bee organizations, we have two national bee organizations, because like everybody else, we can't get along, but anyhow, two years ago, <laughs> We went together and formed a group called the National Honey Bee Advisory Board. Uh, probably the best thing that ever happened because we agree on something. Uh, I was a member of that board. Now I'm co-chairman. I mean, they took a vote. There's, ten, there's eight of us. Seven people voted for me to be co-chairman, and I didn't vote. I voted no, but I never got ruled out. But anyhow, <laughs> our our deal is to meet with EPA and the chemical companies and try to work through some. It's been an educational two years. We have sat down, had lots of meetings with EPA, uh, tell you lots of stories that aren't good. Uh, a year ago, we agreed to go into a study with a product called Levetta, which is a new product that Bear brought out on bees. Halfway through it, Bear pulled the rug out. It was a court case. Have you read about it? Uh, it got pulled off the market, but. In the way court proceedings work, they gave Bear three months to figure out what to do, hassle around, and by that time, Bear emptied all their shells, and it's all out here in the country. The interesting part about it is we we have made we the people in Washington know who we are. They they know we exist. Uh, there was an article in yesterday's paper about the Movetta situation, and and basically says that you know we we know there's problems there. But I'll tell you how much they know we exist. Monday, this past Monday, Monday this, this week, 
when the general counsel for EPA was making their final decision on what they were going to do for, with it before they ever published it in the Federal Register, at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I got a phone call. And I looked at it, I knew it was an EPA number, and I answered it, and the girl said, this is so-and-so, I'm with the general counsel's office, and I'm sitting here with the general counsel's, and we're making the final decision on what we're going to do with the Movet, and we want you to know what our decision is. And it's going to be in the Federal Register. And I said, well, what's, you know, oh, it's not there yet. So it's pretty amazing, you know, when, when they pick up the phone and call us to tell us what they did. Now, we're not happy with what they did, but at least we got them on the run. Um, and we have made some inroads, and we thank people like Beyond Pesticides and Jay for their help, and NRDC and others. Uh, but the message to all you folks out here is that, you know, the the farmer here is not the problem. The homeowner is not the problem. The problem is that what's out there, what these people are buying and using is the problem. And the problem is everything else has been taken away. And they don't have anything else to use. And we need education. We need education. Um, like some, like gentleman said before, we really don't need all this stuff. But people, the chemical companies have a mass budget for education that educating everybody this is what you've got to have and in the farm industry and in the lawn business the applicator is going to come down here and say hey i sprayed your neighbor's lawn now you're going to have all the neighbor's bugs if you don't spray your lawn too and that's the way they sell this stuff and unfortunately they got people and in the farming industry, it's the same thing. You know, they have, they have, the farmer has a guy that comes out, scouts his field, he says, well, your neighbor's going to be spraying, so you better spray it too. Unfortunately, what's happened with these new chemicals, we can now tank mix a lot of this stuff. We can put fungicides and pesticides all in the tank together. We all went to chemistry class, and when the teacher was out, we sat there and we forged stuff, you know? <laughs> and all of a sudden, Something went bang. And the teacher come running in. And he said, what do you do? We don't know. We know you try it the next time the teacher is out, and guess what? Nothing happened. A couple years ago, two years ago actually, a friend of mine in, in, in uh, South Dakota is telling me about a farmer buddy here that they poured a bunch of stuff, made a tank mix, you know, some stuff. And it turned into a gel, and they couldn't get the stuff to come out. So they aerated it for about five hours and mixed some other stuff with it. And they finally got it so they could spray it. And another day, but anyhow, <laughs> Dave asked him, he was really mad, BP. He went down to the bar that night and he said to the guy, he said, so what, what, what did you put on the field? The guy said, I really don't know. And he's actually right, because they don't. They're blending this stuff, somebody told them it'll work, and it, it does, it kills bugs. It may not kill bugs, but it makes them go away. And unfortunately, the honeybees and the other beneficial insects are insects too. This stuff grows up through the plant, gets in the flowers, gets in the pollen, it rides on the protein, the bees bring it back, store it. And when they get these periods of time at the end of the year, in the winter time, when all they got to live on is what's stored in that hive, they go back and get that old food out. And it's not direct effects, it's what we call sublethal. And unfortunately, it's, it's taken down the industry. This past year, we figured, the USDA figures, we lost a million, a million hives of bees. California takes 1.5 million hives of bees to pollinate the almond crop. We were, we were they, we, the industry was short. Uh, there was a lot of boxes rented out there that shouldn't even been in an almond orchard because there wasn't enough bees in them. But, and if it goes away tomorrow, the unfortunate part about half-life of this stuff is a lot worse than the chemical companies ever told EPA it was. And so it's going to be here for a long time. And in France, it took three to four years before the bees started to recover when they banned it. Germany, where the stuff is manual, where the home company for Bayer is, it's banned there, it's banned in Italy. <coughs> unfortunately, here in the United States, you know, we've got to be able to prove without a shadow of doubt the EPA, either that or get some good lawyers and, and clean their clocks. And that may be the next next thing, or get Congress. But uh, thank you for your time. And, uh